Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whatever time it is that you're viewing with us, wherever you might be, I invite you to remember that wherever you are, God is with you. And I invite you in these next few moments as the music begins to play, simply to let go. To let go of whatever news has preoccupied your attention, whatever might be generating fear and anxiety in you or frustration or anger, whatever might be drawing you down into discouragement. And I invite you to remember no matter what you face, that the sun still rises, that the flowers still bloom, and that God is always present with you. So in these next few moments, take all that stuff that draws you away from that and just let it go so that we might together enter and experience the fullness of God's love for us. Prepare in these moments all that you are for the worship of this amazing God. Let us come to God in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that you love us more than we could ever imagine. And we give you thanks that your love is present with us no matter what we face. As we gather in this place, either virtually or in person, we pray that, Lord, we might in these moments be open to how deeply and completely you love us. And in the power of that love, not only may we open ourselves more fully to loving you, but Lord, in that love, we may open ourselves more fully to loving all those whom you place around us, including ourselves. And that Lord, in these moments, we might feel your love filling us with your peace touching us with your transforming power and assuring us of your faithful presence in everything we face. We pray it in the name of the most profound demonstration of your love, the name of your Son, Jesus. And everybody who agreed together, wherever they are, said amen. In the next few moments, Carolyn is going to sing a, a hymn that you might have heard or sung many times, but you may not know exactly where the words come from. They, they actually come from a book of the Bible called Lamentations. and It, it was a book written uh, by the prophet Jeremiah as he grieved over the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and his sadness over that and all the losses. And yet right in the middle of that book of mourning, you find these words, great is thy faithfulness. Some of the words that you'll hear Carolyn sing. And may those words written in a time of even greater loss and struggle than our own remind us that those words remain true today. That indeed great is thy faithfulness. And morning by morning, new mercies we can see. Carolyn, will you lead us?
Let us come to God once again in prayer. Let us pray together. Forgive us our sins, O Lord, the sins of our present and the sins of our past, the sins of our soul and the sins of our body, the sins which we have done to please ourselves and the sins which we have done to please others. Forgive us our casual sins and our deliberate sins and those which we have labored so to hide that we have hidden them from ourselves. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive all our sins. For Jesus' sake, amen. I invite you in these moments simply to take some time to reflect about where you are, what might be capturing your heart, what might be pulling you away from God's presence. And in these moments, not only ask forgiveness, but say, God, I want to let that go. I invite you to do that now. The prayer we just prayed always gets to me because it's so all-encompassing. Our casual sins, our deliberate sins, the stuff that we know is wrong that we do to please ourselves, the stuff that we do to please others, and then the stuff we even hide from ourselves. And the truth is, is in our life, we can get so disconnected particularly in all the stress and strain of these days. And not simply disconnected from God and disconnected from others, though that certainly happens. We could even be disconnected from ourselves. But the good news of these waters, the good news of the gospel, is that God is never, ever disconnected from us. That God is always present, always reaching out, always loving always forgiving, always yearning to come alongside and be our refuge, our strength, our hiding place. So I invite you in these moments, even as you saw this water poured, even as you hear these words, to know they are true. That God not only forgives you, but that God loves you. Each of you, every one of you, no matter what. Amen. That's such good news. What better song to sing about that blessing of all blessings than the song that talks about the fountain of every blessing. Come thou fount. Carolyn, will you lead us? Thank you for joining us each week in this YouTube gathering. We give you thanks because your gifts and support and your prayers enable us to continue this ministry, to continue to bring you uh, gifts of music such as you hear from Carolyn and Jerry. And it also enables us to be out there reaching out to our community. Uh, there's so many ways that we 
been able to do that, even these days of social distancing. And you can go to our Facebook page and just see some of the cool ways we've been doing that. Uh, Daniel Williams started a banana bread outreach, particularly reaching out to some folks that are somewhat isolated in these days or who also serve uh, uh, this congregation in many ways and just need to know that they're loved and cared for. One of those went to a nurse. He's been working on a COVID floor, a little banana bread gift of love. Also, in addition to that, we're flying new flags out on the corner, and you can read about what those cool flags are and how they relate to our history and particularly the beginnings of our nation and the American Revolution. And of course, we're here every week. We, we're here in a few moments. I'll be going to the labyrinth uh, for the walk that I give around noon. It'll be a little later today due to recording issues. But every day I'm on the labyrinth. Every day we're posting things on Facebook. And also, as you are aware, we're beginning our new venture at St. James in partnership with them. And you can look on Facebook and see some of the pages of some of the things that are happening there and how that is moving along very quickly. So please know that even in these days, the, the ministry continues, the mission continues, and we invite you to be out there sharing with your friends and your neighbors and inviting them and welcoming them, welcoming them always into God's love. And so I invite you to know that every week we'll be here, inviting and welcoming you here until it will be safe for us to return in a more physical way. And as we do that, one of the gifts we bring in each week is music. And in a few moments, Carolyn will share a beautiful song called Purify My Heart. It's important to remember what that means. One of the things that's amazing to me about coming to Florida is when I first went into the ocean and I looked down and I could see my feet where I had come from before. That wasn't possible to see the water so clear. But then if I kicked up my feet and the sand would billow up and I would lose touch with what was there. And in our life, that same thing can happen. The sand can kick up the fears, anxieties, the worries, and we can lose touch with what is there. And when we sing, purify my heart, it's saying, God, let all that settle so that we might see you clearly, so that we might see all the goodness that still surrounds us even in these days. So as Carolyn sings, I invite you to make that your prayer as well. Carolyn.
Thank you, Carolyn. I got to admit it. I'm getting really, really weary of all of this. In this coronavirus life, I'm finding myself more impatient, more frustrated, more stressed. You know, and I'm also dealing with a bit of sadness and anger. It just gets so frustrating. Like, in August, I'm planning to take some time away uh, for study leave so I can prepare the sermons coming up in the coming months. And, and I even was able to get a, a, a good preacher to come in and, and record uh, a, a service for us. Uh, ben Sorensen, who's a Presbyterian pastor, but he's now the vice mayor of Fort Lauderdale. And he was excited and enthusiastic about coming to fill in for me. And then after I, I, I got Ben to preach, I thought, study leave? Where am I going to go to leave to study? I mean, even in the past, when I stayed local for study leave, I at least had a library to go to, but they're not going to be open. And, and honestly, would you, if they were, would you feel safe spending hours and hours in a library, even with a mask? Heck, I don't even feel that safe going to the grocery store for 30 minutes in a mask. And, and so, even as I say that, deal with those frustrations. And, and I know I'll, I'll still do study leave. I'll just kind of come to the office every day like I normally do and try to pretend like I'm away somewhere. But, but I do get it. I, I mean, I still have a job. I, I'm not sick. I, I'm able to put food on the table and, and have a roof above my head. I, I have a lot of things to be grateful for. But even so, I get weary. I imagine you are getting weary of this coronavirus life. Especially when we don't know when it's going to end, when we are ever going to be able to return to some semblance of normal. And so you get more frustrated. You get more impatient. You lose touch with the best parts of yourself. With your best self. But how do you rise above that? I mean, how do you not let the challenges of these days hijack your life, who you are? How do you not let your relationships fray, not only with God or with those around you, as important as those are, how do you not let that relationship fray that you have with yourself to lose touch there? In these words, God shows you the way. So let's listen and hear what God has to say. The words come from a psalm of David, Psalm 32. Listen and hear the word of the Lord. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. And then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you at a time of distress. The rush of mighty wars shall not reach them. For you are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. And I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. 
I will counsel you with my eyes upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Now, now how do these words on confessing your sin of all things help you cope with coronavirus life? I mean, they, they help you more than you could ever imagine. Because in these words, God is giving you a key, actually kind of the key, to joy and peace. Not simply in these days, but in every day. For in these words, God is simply saying, do you want to be happy? Then you've got to come out of hiding. And let's be clear, God in this psalm is promising you happiness. It's the first word of the psalm. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And, and, and that last word, covered, tells you more about the happiness God will bring you than any other. You see, people hide. You hide. I hide. Now, in the beginning, people did not hide, or at least the first two people did not. It's right there in Genesis. And the man and his wife, the Adam, were both naked and were not ashamed. In other words, they didn't have to hide. They had no shame, no embarrassment, no insecurity. They, they carried no secrets. They had no hidden places. They were naked and unashamed. But after the whole, you know, snake and the tree thing, that all changed. I mean, there was no more naked and unashamed. I mean, Adam and Eve first, they grabbed fig leaves to kind of hide from each other, hide from what they had done. And then they heard God coming, and they heard some more. And ever, even then when God came, they blamed each other, which blaming is just another form of hiding. And ever since then, that's what people do. They hide. And, and the more you hide, well, the less happy you become. And, and if you don't think that you hide, imagine if I could zap into your brain. And instead of preaching one Sunday here, I, I decided to give a highlight reel of some of the more let's say, interesting thoughts that you entertained over just the past week. Would you be like, awesome! I can't wait for everybody to see what I've been thinking for the last week. Share it with the entire globe. I don't care. I'd be willing to bet that would not be your reaction. And, and, heck, it would not be anybody's because we all hide. But hiding wrecks you. The folks in the rooms of AA said, well, that you are only as sick as your secrets. Heck, in this song, they are literally making this guy sick. He says, while I kept, while I kept silence, my body wasted away. That does not sound good. But, but why does hiding make you sick? It's because the more you hide, the more alone you become. You grow isolated from others. You, you grow isolated from yourself. You grow isolated from God. And in your isolation, limited to your fears, to your shame, to your insecurities, you have a life so much less than what God intended your life to be. But, you know, you do not need to hide. You can be free of that. You can live honest, naked, and unashamed. And you do it the way David, who wrote this psalm, did it. 
you bring yourself out of hiding. But that coming out of hiding does not come easy. For to do that, you got to honestly face what you're really hiding from. See, that's why David not only confesses his sin, he also confesses his iniquity. I mean, hold on, what the heck is iniquity? I mean, who even says that word anymore? But trust me, iniquity, that's a really helpful word. Basically, when David confesses his iniquity, he's saying to God, I'm not only can confess that I've done wrong things, I'm going to confess how much I liked it. How even though I knew it was wrong and hurtful and self-destructive, I still did it. See, David is saying, I'm not going to just face what I did. I am going to face up to why I did it. You see, sometimes you can be sorry for the wrongs you've done. You can even believe that, man, you are genuinely sorry. But in reality, you're, you're not so much sorry for the wrong. You're just sorry for its consequences. You're like the mule that David talks about in this psalm that only goes the right way when he feels the pain, when he feels the bit, the discomfort inside his mouth, yanking him. In other words, you only stop going in the wrong direction when that direction starts hurting too much. You know, uh, the preacher, Tim Keller, he talks about when he started out in ministry, that, that he encountered a husband who was a total jerk to his wife. He was cold and unavailable and harsh even. And, and when she called him on it, he ignored her. When she asked for counseling, he said, no. And then one day she told him, I've had enough. I want a divorce. And that's when the husband called Tim, his pastor, and asked desperately if, if Tim would meet with them. And, and Tim Keller did, and husband, husband fessed up, man. He acknowledged, I've been a total jerk. And for six months, man, he was better. He was kinder. He was more considerate. He was more loving. He was more focused on his wife. But then he thought, you know, I don't think she's going to leave me. And boom, he was right back to jerk town. Well, more time passed, and again, she said, I'm going to divorce. And again, the husband called his preacher, Tim Keller, desperately seeking counseling. Now, now Keller did not share the end of the story, but it sure did not sound like it was going in a good direction. But do you see why? You see, this guy was not really sorry for being a jerk. No, he was sorry for the consequences of being a jerk. About losing his marriage, failing as a husband, the embarrassment, the humiliation, the cost of a divorce. But for him to come out of hiding, he had to go deeper. He would have to ask some hard questions about why he treated a woman he claimed to love in the cold and harsh way he did. He'd have to face up to his iniquity, to his mess inside. And that can be hard. Lately, my son has fallen in love with the most surprising of songs. It's, a, it's one called Monkster by the rock band Skillet. Now, my son loves the song because he saw it in a video about Sonic the Hedgehog. But now I've listened to the song like a hundred times. And the song, it's begun to get to me. Because it's words, man. They hit closer to home than I would like. See, the lyrics go like this. 
The secret side of me I never let you see. I keep it caged, but I can't control it. So stay away from me. The beast is ugly. I feel the rage, and I just can't hold it. It's scratching on the walls, in the closet, in the halls. It comes awake, and I can't control it. Hiding under the bed, in my body, in my head. Why won't somebody come and save me from this? Make it end. I feel it deep within. It's just beneath the skin. I must confess that I feel like a monster. I hate what I've become. The nightmare has just begun. I must confess that I feel like a monster. Now, I do not carry the level of rage this writer describes, but I know enough of it to recognize that I carry a version of that monster inside me. I have ugliness inside of me. Ugliness I would rather not see. And to be honest, these days of social isolation and fear and stress and anxiety have made me more aware of that than ever. You know, and recently, it made me more aware in a painfully uncomfortable way of how a lot of the ugliness in the world around me has helped me. Years ago, I heard someone share this saying, he said, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it did not get there by itself. And what I did not see is that I was one of those turtles. You see, I am a straight, white, American male. And those four things, none of which I did anything to get, have given me advantages in life that lots of others did not have and did not get. And for the longest time, I wasn't willing to face just how unfair all that is. Or how much, honestly, I kind of enjoyed basking in my undeserved privilege. But more and more, I see how much pain and loss this system that put me on the fence post has cost so many others. And I realize I have a responsibility to do what I can do to change that, to make it more fair. And that begins with me not hiding from the reality or hiding from myself the reality that the world I live in favors me. And it favors me in ways that hurt and limit and diminish others. So you come out of hiding. What then? Well, then the happiness comes. <laughs> Why? Because when you come out of hiding, when you face the ugliness within you and even around you, you have a God that covers it that covers it completely. See, God says to you, I get it. You've got stuff you don't want anyone to ever see. You have stuff you do not even want to see. But God says, if you bring it out of hiding, I will cover it. I will take away your shame. I will free you from this. I will free you from feeling this need to hide like this ever again. And with that freedom comes happiness, comes joy, comes peace. See, in the early Christian communities, when you were baptized, even as an adult, you walked in the water naked. And when you came out, someone placed on you a sparkling white robe, your baptismal garments. Someone clothed you in beauty. And how can God do that? How can God cover it all? God can do that because in Jesus, 
He was stripped naked and humiliated so you would never be, never have to be. See, in Jesus, God took your shame and ugliness so that you can live unashamed, so God can instead fill you with beauty. And Jesus did that because Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you no matter what. So much that Jesus gave up everything to bring you home so that you could come out of hiding for his love covers a multitude of sins. And in that love, you have nothing you need to hide. Instead, you can hide in him, in Jesus. A thousand years ago, a Byzantine monk named Simeon wrote a prayer that described just how beautiful this sort of hiding in Jesus is. Simeon wrote this, we awaken in your body, O Christ, as you awaken in our bodies. I wake up inside your body where all my body, all over every most hidden part of it is realized as joy in you. And you make me utterly real. And everything that is hurt, everything that seemed to me dark, and harsh, shameful, maimed, ugly, irreparably damaged is in you transformed and recognized as whole, as lovely, and radiant in your light. Come out of hiding. You are covered. And know even in the darkest of these days, even in the days when the darkness gets to you, you can live free. You can live naked and unashamed. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you love us more than we could ever imagine. And in Jesus, you've offered up everything for us so that, Lord, we can never be separated from you. And that, Lord, we can come to you in all those places that we so yearn to hide. And you see them already. And your light shines there. And it will take the darkness away. It will take everything that we see as irreparably harmed or ugly or dark or shameful and make it whole and lovely in your light. And so, dear God, trusting in that love, we bring to you a world where there remains much ugliness and pain. We pray for healing for those who are battling all sorts of health issues, but especially this pandemic and this virus. And we pray for healing for them. We pray, Lord, for those in the hospitals or nursing homes or even at home caring for those sick. And we pray that you protect them and you be with them as they bring healing towards others. We pray for those searching for a vaccine. We pray for those in leadership. And you help them to lead us wisely and well. And Lord, we pray for each and every one of us, not only in this nation, but literally around the world, who are caught up in these difficult days. And we pray that, Lord, we might know and sense your presence. We might experience your peace. And that, Lord, whatever we are hiding from others or from ourselves, we might feel free to bring it to you. And to know that we can live free and unashamed. And dear God, we pray for a world in which we are more aware 
of the unfairness of things, even in our own nation. And we pray for a, a nation that is more just, that is more fair, that does not judge people, as Dr. King said, by the color of their skin, but truly by the content of their character. And we pray, Lord, for this world, for healing for every broken and hurting place. We pray that as a church, we will be ambassadors of your love, of your grace to our community, and that you will help us to live that love, inviting and welcoming everyone into it. And in these moments, I invite you, wherever you are, to bring to God whatever God places upon your hearts, whatever names or concerns. In these moments of silence, I invite you to do that now. And dear God, as we bring this all to you, we remember the prayer that you shared with us. And as your beloved children, we boldly pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth like it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for all the ways in which you have continued to support our ministries. Uh, your gifts are enable us to sign a contract to work on the AC units in here so that that can be repaired, which is essential to us being able to physically reopen along with many other things. We continue to be out there um, reaching and serving this community through these services and through the other things that I mentioned in the news of the community. And so please know that, that your gifts are always welcome as God gives you the ability. Uh, you can mail them to the church at 1530 Hollywood Boulevard, 33020. You can go to our website, look for the green button, press the give there and give a gift in that way as well. And please know that the offering plate goes both ways. If there's a need that you have, we invite you to reach out to us and we will do whatever we can to support you and be there for you in these days. And with that, let us join in this offering of prayer. Oh God, bring new life where we are worn and tired New love where we have turned hard-hearted. Forgiveness where we have wounded. And the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we are the prisoners of ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we close, I invite you to hear from Carolyn once again as she leads us in this great hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. Thank you for joining us once again for YouTube worship. And may you go forth this day and know you don't need to hide. Not like God doesn't see it anyway. God sees you and God loves you. Even in your most broken and shameful of places. 
May you experience that love. May you know the blessing of that love in every way. And may that love keep you and surround you and bless you. In the name of the God who loved you first, in the name of the God who in Jesus offered up everything for you. In the name of this God who can work even in these challenging days, even in the challenges of our own lives, more than we could ever ask or imagine. May this God bless you and keep you and keep you safe in these challenging days. And now I invite you to go out in triumph and in peace as Jerry leads us out in song.